Uh, hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and in today's After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a flickering transition, like you saw at the start of the tutorial. That's great, I like to start tutorials by telling you what we're going to make in them. It's a crazy idea. Anyway, I get asked a lot, Evan, how do you make a flickering uh, transition? And then I say some sarcastic crap back at them. And eventually, uh, we learn to understand each other. But, uh, given the volume of people asking, I figured I'll just make a tutorial about it and I'll send them a link here, so problem solved. Uh, the problem is, there's no one answer to how to do anything in After Effects. So, we're actually going to approach this fairly simple topic uh, multiple ways. So, we're going to use keyframes, we're going to use uh, expressions, we're going to use effects. Probably not in that order, we'll, we'll go in order of difficulty. and. Honestly, After Effects isn't the best for transitioning. Certainly you need to transition things on and off in After Effects, and you can use this technique to do that as well. And, you know, if you transition footage on over other footage, then, you know, that's just a transition. But the transitions are usually done in something like Adobe Premiere, so, uh, spoilers. We're gonna talk about Adobe Premiere at the very end. Stick around to the end. You know what? Or just fast forward there. If you don't care about this crap, then fast forward there, you know, take your... Take your prize and get out of here. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. This is an Adobe After Effects tutorial about flickering transitions. This is a flickering transition. A boo 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 That sound is important. All right, so we're here in After Effects and we want to make two things flicker between each other and then finally have just one of them. So I guess we should make a new composition. Sure, why not? And then... Uh, put some solids out here and I want you guys to know that this works for any kind of layer, whether it's a text layer, whether it's a photo layer, whether it's a video layer. We'll use solids and we'll probably use video layers. So new solid. Okay, cool. Let's make the solid uh, like a red color. Okay, that's good. Now we'll make a new solid and the solid will be like a blue color. Like I said in the beginning, there's a lot of ways to do this. And uh, something else to know, it really doesn't matter what version of After Effects you're going to be on. Uh, this should work for pretty much all of them. I'm on Adobe After Effects CC 2015. Uh, for another part of this, I'm going to use Adobe Premiere CC 2015. So if yours doesn't look just like mine, don't worry about it. That's totally normal. It's totally fine. Mm, I, maybe it's not. I don't know. But, you know, this shouldn't be a problem. The first method is to use keyframes. And the question asker, uh, whenever someone asks me this, some of their answer was in that question. How do I make something flicker its transparency or its opacity? Uh, let me just hit the old T key here, and it looks like I can manually alter the opacity of a layer as much as I'd like. Whee, look at it go. So if you twirl down into a layer, it's got this thing here that says transform, then it's got all these properties. So you could just set some keyframes and be like, okay, it's gonna be 100% here. Now I'm holding down shift, I'm hitting page down, I'm moving ahead in time. I could hit page up, page down. Look at me go, paging up, paging down, going all over the place. So whenever you see my playhead move like this, I'm probably hitting page up or page down. So I could go ahead a bit, be like, ooh, now it's gonna be zero. Move ahead a little bit. Ooh, now it's going to be 100. Move ahead a little bit. Ooh, now it's going to be zero. So, you know, see, I can do this manually. And what does that look like? Wee -oo -wee -oo. Um, that's pretty good. But as you can see, it goes to 50% between. Uh, I'm going to click this button here and look at the old graph editor. And I'm going to make sure I'm looking at a value graph. So I'm looking at the values of these things. And as you can see, you know, these are linear keyframes in a line. So the values are going like that. I can select those keyframes. I can right click on them and I can say toggle hold keyframes. Now they look like this. And let's go back to the graph. Look back at that. Oh, look, this has changed. And a hold keyframe is different than other keyframes uh, because a hold keyframe is holding where it's at until it's told otherwise. So now it's, you know, blinking on and off. And then I can take these like, ooh, sweet, copy you, control C, command C, and to paste, and to paste. So flicker, 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 and then, uh, you know, that's it. I'm holding down uh, Alt, Option, hitting the old square bracket over here, trimming the layer. Maybe your trim layer command is different than mine, but trim a layer. Bop, 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 boop. 
Cool. Look at that. I just manually did it using method one, the keyframe. So you could kind of bunch these up if you want. Let's just zoom in a little bit here and bunch them up. So, you know, you could make them bunch up where they're like, oh, yeah, once every one frame and then once every two frames, maybe, you know, do that for a bit. And then maybe once every three frames, one, two, three, two, three, four. Oh, boy, look at us go here. One, two, three, four, maybe. I don't know. Do something like this. You could stagger them or make them funky and weird however you want. But one of the troubles of this method is, you know, if you want them bunched on one end, bunched on the other end, you got to go through and you got to manually bunch them. I mean, unless you have a script or something that's doing the bunching for you. You know, you got to do this yourself. You could go in here, uh, move all these points, move these points around, touch all these stupid points, got to go in here, got to zoom in a lot, whatever. Kind of annoying, all right? It's kind of annoying. Uh, there are other ways to make this work, and there are some other limitations to this thing, too. Like, well, we've already tied up the opacity here, so if we want to say, you know, have it going, you know, 50%, 75 all over the place, we would have to throw down the transform on here to, uh, you know, if we want to mess with its opacity in another uh, another way, we could do that, but we just have to bring that on. So if we want it to fade out gradually over time while it's flickering, then we'd need to throw this on it. And really, if you want to throw the transform on here as well, you could use that effect and keyframe the opacity on there. Both of which are good ways to use keyframes. It's a good way to do a lot of manual work. Congratulations. But like I said at the beginning, there are multiple ways to do this. So let's call this method one and let's call that the keyframe driven uh, thing. So I've already made these comps so that I can just look at them and, and tell you about them. So that was way number one. That was fun. So I'm going to delete this. Let's do a second way. Let's use an effect to do this. Now, uh, hopefully... Uh, you know, maybe you read the Twitter conversation there at the, during the intro that, you know, I suggested using something called a strobe light. Now, this is an effect that its function is to strobe blank, 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 blank. Pretty cool, right? Um, not really. But what it does is it's either going to make this color fill the entire layer or it can make the layer transparent. Let's do that one. And then... You know, it makes it transparent for a certain amount of time every so much time. That's it. That's what it does. And we can also make it like blend with the original here. So, you know, make it make the effect totally blend with the original, make it 0%. Awesome. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to use keyframes on, I believe, the blend with original and the duration and period. I'm going to hit U when I'm selecting this layer to have a look at those. Uh, the blend with original here, I'm going to toggle a hold keyframe for it. And I guess around the one second mark, yeah, I guess now is when I'd like it to be at zero. And let's have it blend completely with the original here. So no strobing, then strobing. So that's basically what we're saying is we want you to strobe here, uh, but not over here. So perfect. Now I'm going to take these uh, duration things here and... What happens if I start altering these? So if I want it to go every frame, I should use a fraction like 1 divided by 24. And then it'll do the math for me and do this because this comp is 24 frames a second. So maybe I go 2 divided by 24. So the strobe period every 0.833 seconds or one frame. Uh, why don't you turn yourself off for one frame? Let's give that a shot. How does that go? So nothing, nothing, nothing. Wow! That was tense and intense. So maybe that's where we want the strobing to end up, but we want it to sort of start not as extreme. So let's times this by five. Go in here, multiply this by five. So start off slowly and then get more extreme and then you're done. So we could do that. How does that go? And then we're done. Or conversely, like we said with the keyframe thing, what if we start tight and then get loose? You know, what if we divide this by five? I'll go in here and divide you by five. Just kind of invert this kind of relationship, you know? We could 
you know, times u by five. Oh, in here times u by five. Okay, so it's gonna start tight and then loosen up and then it's done. So that's something you can do and, you know, feel free to end this madness at any point. You just do what you feel. So this is wide open. It's good times for everybody. So that's a way you can do this with effects. And this also frees up your opacity property to be used to sort of call that up here. You take that opacity and you just gradually reduce it over time. So, you know, as this thing is flickering, it's also blending with the other thing. That's fun. Um, if you at some point decide, man, I'm not too thrilled with having it fast and then slow. I want it slow then fast. Well, you can just alter that by altering two keyframes here, two keyframes here, or you can just grab them, right click and go keyframe assistant, time reverse, flippity flop, done. So you could do it that way. And in the keyframe driven one, we can select all these and we can go keyframe assistant flippity flop as well. Absolutely. Um, but if you want to get more nuanced into here, that's not as, as fun because here in the effect driven world, this one, we could, you know, we could easy ease these keyframe assistant, easy ease them, you know, to try to ease into this, we could ease out of it, you know, gives us a little bit more nuanced control over time. Uh, you know, we just, if we want this to go on longer, we just extend this, we extend this, that's it. That's fine. So very easy to set up and very easy to move on to other layers. So if we want to go from, uh, you know, from red to blue to, you know, new solid color, I don't know. What's a good color, green, yellow, let's do green. Sure. Okay. Whatever. You know, then later we want red to do the same thing. Well, select the strobe light, you know, copy it, go here and make sure your playhead is somewhere. Paste, hit U and oh, look, it's going to do it again. Here it goes. Wee! Fun times. So just trim the layer off and you're good. So that's how you, you can replicate the process. So, so we've done it with keyframes. We've done it with effects. There's really only a third way you know, in the grand scheme of things to do this. And that's with our old buddy Expressions, who is a fickle weirdo who sits in his basement and just judges you for not knowing all of his eccentricities and, you know, not being hip to all the fine, expensive cheeses that uh, he eats on weekends or whatever. You know, I guess Expressions is kind of like an elitist uh, dickhead who is just always telling you, you did it wrong, just all, all day, every day. That's his jam. Um, but as you've seen, you know, the effects driven, very simple, uh, fewer keyframes, you know, most keyframes, uh, least keyframes, in fact, zero, none keyframes. So using this expression, which I can tell you right now is available in the description. So you go down and check that out. Let's copy paste this bad boy and enjoy that. It will require you to have sort of a nuanced understanding of expressions in order to make use of this thing. But... I'll kind of talk you through the parts right here and you can kind of see what it does. The main goal of this expression was to have something, a layer that's totally fine, fine, fine. And then it runs into a marker and then not fine, not fine. And then, you know, it's done. So uh, that's sort of, sort of what the plan was to do that and to have the blinking kind of accelerate as we go. So, if we look at the graph of this expression, it looks like this. And if you can't see the graph of your expression, just click this button over here. Check it out. So let's go through the parts of this expression. Uh, as you can see up at the top, we got three uh, variables. Amp, that's the amplitude. Freak, that's the frequency. T is a difficult way of explaining uh, time, uh, making the time based on the marker. So Amp is 50. We're just saying, hey, make the amplitude 50, please. Uh, we're going to use that later. We're going to slot it in later. Uh, if we make the amplitude 10, let's go back to this, uh, not a lot of change, you will notice. And that is because things that happen later in the expression. So I'm just going to cut those away. Then we'll go back. So if the amplitude was 10, as you can see, it only goes 
to either side of 50. It goes 10 up and 10 down. Now that's also because of other parts of the expression and we're using the cosine wave here. Essentially what's gonna happen is, thanks to the amplitude, we're gonna go uh, plus 10, minus 10, plus 10, minus 10, oscillating onward into the future. So that's what amplitude is gonna do for us. Frequency, and I'm just gonna put that back up to 50. Frequency is how often are we gonna have a wave? You know, how often are these waves gonna happen? And if we weren't then doing some messed up stuff later on, we would see a consistent wave you know, that's 50 high and 50 low and do that 10 times, you know, 10 times within a second, kind of. Um, and then the next variable here, and after all your variables, always put the semicolon. You gotta put that semicolon after all your variables. The next variable is T equals time, uh, minus uh, marker, blah, 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 time. Essentially what this is saying is make T, make the variable of T, equal to time minus the time of this marker. So there's many ways to reference markers. This is one of those ways. So look at a marker. You wanna look at the mm, marker nearest to the current time index. It's gonna be this. And in fact, if we only put one on there, it's always gonna be this. And then return us the value of its time. And then we're gonna subtract that, subtract this from the current time. So at this point, t equals zero, right? At this point, you know, it's, you know, three minus this, so we're in the negative. Over here, we're positive. Okay, good. So that's what it does. It's just, you know, making time based on this. And that sort of means that we can move this around and have the start of this business be there. And that's what we want. We want it to be based on something. I want it to be based on this. So we could also make it sort of based on the end of the thing. We could make it based on the start of the, the layer. I don't want to do that. I want it to have a marker so I can slide this wherever I want. Okay, let's move on. Uh, these slashes here, I should probably let you know, are saying uh, annotation. So if you want to annotate your stuff, put these lines, then type whatever you want. Okay, so X equals, this next part, uh, X, and we're saying this is how we're going to make the wave. So X is going to equal the amplitude, 50, times math.cos, get that cosine in there, and then modify that cosine uh, with frequency times t times t. So t times itself, t squared, um, times the frequency here is going to cause that compressing uh, wave to happen, and then add 50 to that. So we're adding 50 because that's what we want to do. We want this thing to be not coming in in the middle so not plus or minus from zero, but plus or minus from 50. So 50 up, 50 down, modulating between 100%, 0%, because we're just trying to get it to fit into the opacity. So that's why the 50 here, that's why the 50 there. With all of that, if we just had that, just take this away again, we would have this decaying wave where it's getting pinched closer, closer, infinitely closer on itself. Ah, it's getting crazy out there. It's getting so tight on itself it can't even display properly. Um, and all of it happening starting here. So that's great. That is exactly what we want, kind of, because if we observe what that does, it's fading, 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 blink, 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 blink. Great. And then I stop the layer. So that's good, but we want to be clicking on and off. So this rest of the thing is doing that. Uh, well, it's doing two things. The first is it's saying if hey, expression, if, and then in these brackets, if what? Well, if the time is ever less than the time of this marker, it's that thing again, then just be 100. Just be all on, all right? Now, if that's ever not the case, else, if else, then get this bracket here, this squiggly do bracket. It has a better name. I don't care to know it. Get the squiggly do bracket. If else, so if it's anything but this, then I'll ask you another question. Then I'll say, if X is greater than 50, then make yourself 100. So if your time is ever before this, then make yourself 100. If not, then ask yourself if X is bigger than 50, then you make yourself 100. And if it's anything else, if it's anything that's not those two conditions, you should be zero. 
And that's it. So that alone causes you to be either 100 or 0. And it also builds in that before this point, it's going to be 100. So that allows this to blink, 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 and then start blinking like crazy and blink, 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 and then done. So that's how you can do this with an expression. If you type this out once, you can then put it into a text file, copy from the text file, paste it in here, da -da, you're done. So you can do that, throw this marker out, give yourself a double thumbs up, have a nice day. So those are three methods that we've used to make this happen. Keyframes, effects, expressions. But from a theoretical perspective, who cares, right? Doing this in After Effects is like working in a vacuum. It's nonsense. Uh, I hope no one is doing long edits in After Effects because that's just not what it was made to do. Uh, if you want to edit footage, we have a program for that. It's called Premiere, and we're going to go there right now. Whoa. So... Here in Premiere, uh, you've got clips, you've got footage, you can throw them out on a timeline. It's good time. So I'm going to take uh, two of those such things and throw them onto a timeline. How about this footage and this footage? Let's throw them. So we've got these two things out there. Wonderful. Uh, these two clips. Maybe you have a timeline much like this. I'm going to just unlink them and delete this. I'm not going to talk about Premiere a lot in this tutorial. If you're using Premiere, hopefully you already know how to cut things or whatever. But, you know, your question is probably, well, Evan, I want to combine my After Effects powers with my Premiere powers, and then I would say, go check out the tutorial that's expressly about that on this channel. But for right now, you've got real footage, you've got real problems. You want to make these flicker between each other. You are not content with all of the transitions that you have here, and maybe you don't feel like going and buying other transitions. So this is what you got. And you want to take footage from here, put it into After Effects, and then put a transition on it. So the best way to do that, I find, maybe you're going to do this a lot, I don't know, is to make sure your clips overlap in here. So you have kind of this structure going on. Then what you can do, and I recommend you click on a layer, you hit M, M puts a little marker on it. And so you know, okay, I want it to start blinking starting now. So this is when you want the blinking to start. And then you can either take both of them, just take one of them, you can right click, you replace with Adobe After Effects composition. It opens it up in After Effects and look, it's got that marker on there. Wait, what's that marker for? What is he copying? What's going on? Oh, man. And then pasting. Boom. And then, uh, you know, then it's blinky time. So there you go. That's kind of why I like the expression one. Just marker something up. Come in here. Make it happen. So I've done that. Then if I hit the old save, I go back into Premiere, it's going to happen. But don't feel you have to use the expression one for this. I could just throw some keyframes on there. I could just throw some effects on there. I can do whatever, you know. I put that marker on so I know when I want to start. I don't have to bring this clip in with me, you know. I don't have to. I'd like to, but I don't have to. Uh, you know, just bring a clip from the Premiere into the After Effects. Do your stuff. Hit save. Go back. Everything's fine in here because that's how it works. And continue with your day. Uh, I don't recommend editing in After Effects, but if you must make things flicker using After Effects, please enjoy doing it this way. Uh, it's pretty quick to jump between the two things. Then you can continue doing what else in here, or anything else you want. So yeah, that was three ways to make things flicker in transitions in After Effects and a little bit of Premiere. So hopefully that was helpful to you. If you've enjoyed watching this After Effects tutorial, then definitely recommend you subscribe to this channel. We talk about mostly After Effects on here, except in this case, where if you click somewhere on the screen, you can check out how to do this in Premiere only, no After Effects required, so that could be fun. I don't post a lot of Premiere tutorials on here, so maybe you'll enjoy that. 
Uh, what else? Uh, well, if you have any questions about topics that are interesting to you, hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams or leave them in the comments. If you have questions about this tutorial, leave them in the comments of this tutorial and I'll try to get back to you. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you had fun. I had fun, I guess, talking to myself, but apparently you. So uh, if you found these things uh, very confusing, uh, the files that we worked on in here that show the three methods uh, are available at evanabrams.com. So check that out and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're into After Effects at all, subscribe to this channel. I've said that like three times, but it's important. We we'll post things sometimes. So if you want to get notified when that happens, do that. And if you do, then I'll see you around the internet. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.